Welcome back puppies to Barking Dogs Miniature Painting Video. Please like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on Facebook and you can support us on Patreon. Hey guys, it's Christian with Barking Dogs Miniature Painting and today we're going to be working on this manticore. I'm going to show you one that I have that's actually been kind of my test piece. It's this guy right here. So I'm currently working on two of these. <clears throat> kind of experiment on this guy first. So far I'm pretty satisfied with the way things have turned out. Um, that said, some things have been done differently on the other one. Uh, I got the highlights a little better on the fur for the body and I'm not going to probably mess with the skin tone and the wings as much as I did on this one. Um, but yeah, and I'm probably going to do the stinger slightly different on the other one. So I'm, I'm, I kind of like that, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when I get to the other one. This is a manticore. Um, and it is based more off the mythical creature than the D&D creature. Uh, you know, the one in the Dungeons & Dragons monster or manual um, shoots spines out of its tail. Uh, but the mythological creature had a, like a scorpion stinger in it, which is what this guy has. And his face isn't quite man-shaped, but pretty close, like there's some elements there. And so I painted, hopefully, to kind of bring that out more. I gave it more of just like a kind of a Caucasian skin tone. So the fur actually was primer. Um, <laughs> I didn't, well I mean I did highlight it but I did it all with an airbrush and I used this um, as the base coat. This was the original primer coat is this uh, Vallejo German dark yellow and then I mixed it with uh, well that's not it I mixed it with the light gray excuse me while I stretch and grab a hold of that for you I mixed it with this uh, Vallejo gray primer to bring out some highlights lighten it up a little bit and on this guy the highlights are a little more bold and of course, I did kind of a zenithal on that. Um, uh, and now, before we jump into actually painting this, because I'm going to throw some paint on this guy uh, for this video, I want to just show you a couple things I've been working on. Like I said, I've been working on these guys for a couple of months. These are their bases. And right here is where one of the paws go. I had it kind of masked off with Silly Putty just to leave some of the bare plastic there just to help adhesion when I go to glue the mini on there. Um, this one I need to touch up a little bit with some paint because the glue didn't dry clear and it kind of left a little white blotch there. So the actual base that comes uh, with the model, it does come with this oval base, but then it also comes with this other plastic piece, which are these rocks right here. And then I added more stuff to it. And so one paw will get glued right there. I'm probably not going to pin that one when that time comes. Right there, that little indention in the rock. But uh, the hind feet will probably get pinned in here somewhere just to help secure the model. Um, we'll probably record that process. Uh, and again, just real quick before I jump into throwing model and paint on the manicure, I just want to show you I have got some other stuff going. I've got these frogs from, um, well, I, technically these are toads from Otherworld Miniatures. Uh, for those of you who aren't in the know about the difference between toads and toads and frogs, um, frogs, uh, well, they'll typically have smoother skin, but the main differences are their legs. Frogs actually have uh, much longer legs and uh, some other tidbits, some interesting trivia if you will. Uh, toads don't have teeth, frogs do. Toads uh, lay their eggs in a straight line, frogs lay them in clumps. There you go. 
the more you know, right? So, yep, here's some toads that I'm going to be working on later. Um, and again, they're actually just primed. That's just Vallejo primer, the colors that you see in there. Just a Vallejo primer. And then I got this uh, little dragon here. I got it for um, being part of a Kickstarter on um, some of Matt Koval's uh, stuff. Well, his first Kickstarter, actually, the MCDM uh, Strongholds and Followers. It's a Sapphire Dragon Wormling. So I got him kind of painted up. And he was just kind of a quick paint. I mo mostly again did the zenithal and then I did a couple of layers of kind of a transparent blue and then I just had some liberty with his um, I don't know what you call it those ridges that come off his back and then his little whiskers there uh, see I used blue heat from uh, secret weapon was the thin layers of blue. Before that, I did a Xenothal Prime, and I think I hit it with uh, a real thin coat of the uh, Ultramarine here from Vallejo. And then, it was again, it was a real thin coat, so you still really saw a lot of the shading from the um, Xenothal Prime that I did. And then I just slapped on some of that uh, blue heat from Secret Weapon. So, I mean, he's nothing real special. I didn't put a lot of work into him. I did it pretty quick. Now, this guy here I've actually had on my table for probably six months because uh, I would just kind of lose my inspiration in, in painting him. He is a Reaper Miniatures. Uh, I can't remember the line. He is a metal one. Um, but I really got it because I wanted something kind of new and exotic to throw at my players. And uh, I, just, I just I got it thinking it was cool, and then I just had a hard time getting inspired to paint it. Now he still needs some work, but what's ended up happening is I primed him, I tried doing like a tiger stripe thing, it didn't really work, so I took the tape off, didn't really clean it up a whole lot, uh, painted over that, but then you could still see the difference in the layer of paint um, where I'd had the tape versus where I hadn't, and then I slapped some more primer on him. Uh, so at this point, some of the details have been lost, but not not a whole lot because there wasn't really like a lot of super details in him in the first place, or her, it, whatever it is. Um, yeah, and then where he got to where he's at now was uh, just again it was just a real quick slap on paint just to try to get it done. Uh, when I primed him last, I primed him, primed him in the same colors that I did the toads. And then I just slapped a wash on him and then came back and did the bone bits and a couple of different Vallejo uh, model color colors. The, the final one being kind of an ivory. And then I'm probably just going to paint around black around the base, slope, throw some flock on it and be done. Because uh, he'll work for just you know throwing him on the table, you know, three, four rounds, however long he might live. And then other than that, uh, these are the bases for the toads I've got and I kind of was having some play on that. Something I've noticed from looking at like a lot of um, higher end professional models that get painted, usually like the, the box art if you will, or some of the website um, pictures that you look at um, on some of your higher end stuff like this guy who currently has a broken sword. Um, and he's also very, very dusty. It's actually one of my better paint jobs other than right now he's just covered in dust. Um, anyways, If you go look at that guy online, he's from Black Sun. Uh, the 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 art looks really interesting. What what I noticed after looking at it for a while is that parts of it are real dark, and what it does is it forces you to look at this lighter area. Because um, on, on on that model on the display one at the website, this part of him is lighter than the rest of the model, and it actually even starts to look kind of cheesy. Like you could tell whoever painted it was a really good artist, but they I don't know. It was just really weird how they kind of manipulated your eye, and the more you look at it, you can kind of tell. So I kind of played with that concept on these bases, where uh, typically I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock in like doing a, a highlight on on the bases, um, but I actually did. I actually did highlight these, but I highlighted them for a certain direction, 
after I figured out where the, the toad is going to lay on there. I even got a, I even put a little footprint just to keep my direction when I was painting it. Um, so I knew where I was going. So I'm trying to force the eye up towards the front of the model. So that'll be interesting because I'll need to carry that theme through painting the actual toads, I guess. But perhaps I should save all that for a later video about the toads. And let's jump into yeah. the... That's what I'm going to show you today. It's just how I got this look on this miniature with relative ease. Now for the palette on this, um, I'm just using a bottle cap. It is totally an idea I took off of, what was it, Next Level, Kenny Boucher. Uh, I just use bottle caps and I use them for washes rather than putting them in my wet palette. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to shade it with uh, this mid-brown. I might add a drop or two of dark tone just to darken it up a little bit. In which case the ratio, maybe one to 10, two to 10. Let me see how I figured one, two, three, make that three to 10. Cause I'm totally just improvising. Now when I do this, and this was actually inspired by looking at photos of lions. Uh, lion manes, some of them are dark, but actually that seems to be rare when I was looking at photos. A lot of times the manes are actually the same color as the rest of the lion, which is interesting because I think in a lot of art, uh, you always see the mane this color, but from looking at dozens of pictures of, I say dozens, just Google image uh, a bunch of lions. And this is actually kind of rare, uh, a lot of times, You'll also find that this thicker part of the hair, what's called the mane, will actually be the same color as the rest of the lion, but maybe just the very tips of the hair will be kind of dark. And then you'll come across some uh, fewer pictures where the mane is actually kind of um, dark like that. But I like that look. But what I did to give it some variety, and again, this was actually inspired from looking at pictures of lions, I didn't come all the way up to the, the face with the, the mane, right? So all these hairs off of here stayed this base kind of lion color, that um, kind of dark yellow tan. So we're going to uh, carry that through onto this one. Just come in here, start slapping some paint on. Oh, I did forget to mention uh, one of the things I did do on the previous model, I did it on this one, was after, before this step, after I got it primed and highlighted where I wanted it, I actually hit it with a gloss, a spray gloss. Here I am being very generous with this paint. Like I just load quite a bit up on the brush. Excuse me, I'm just grabbing the other model because I'm kind of trying to follow the same hairline that I did on it. So I want to come all the way up to his ear. Still on camera there? Yeah. Again, I'm not afraid to be generous with the paint. I'm 
normally I wouldn't flood my brush like that, but for what we're doing here, it's going to be okay. Um, I know I mentioned the Netterall earlier, and just to make sure that I got his name thrown out there for all like five or six of you that actually watch my videos. Um, that was uh, from Josh from Mini Painting Studio. Go check him out if you got a chance or get a chance. So I kind of am liking the tone of this one better because I added that uh, dark. I don't think I did that before. I think that was just straight uh, mid-brown. I probably will have to give this guy more than one coat. Honestly, it's been long enough. I can't remember how many coats I did the other one. But I want to say once it actually dried, I don't think I did. If I did more than one coat, I didn't do more than two. Because I just remember being really surprised at how much darker it tended. And I think what happens, because I noticed it on another model before, um, actually, it was those frog or toad, excuse me, toad bases. Because uh, part of how I got that color was I actually spray, sprayed it through my airbrush with a, a, a wash. And I think what happens is as the fluid evaporates, you know, uh, I don't want to say the water, but whatever the base is, I'm sure there's some water in it if we actually read the ingredients, but as it dries, I think that the pigment just kind of um, spreads out a little bit more maybe, I don't know, as the medium is dried out of it. So if I haven't mentioned it already, this Manticore is actually from Atlantis Miniatures over in the UK. It's kind of nice to be getting my paint on again the last couple of days. Uh, for the mouth area, that was a combination of uh, the skin tone, the dense or heavy skin tone, and then I did a red army shade wash inside the mouth. And I made sure as I was doing that to come up and get the gums, so the gums have a red tinge to them too. And that's how you get the uh, realistic looking mouth. And then the teeth, I think that was an off-white. I can't really remember. I might have used the elfic flesh tone for the teeth. It wasn't a, it wasn't a straight white. But I did those last. And then on his eyes, I painted his eyes red. And then I'm not going to lie, to get that pupil, I used this. I can't draw, but I bought these for the sole purpose of getting, yeah, I totally use this to dot eyes to create pupils sometimes. And I generally end up using the finest one, which you could probably buy this one yourself if you wanted to kind of cheat and do that. Uh, part of the reason why I do it is because getting a good dot out of the end of these paint brushes, um, well, I've seen some artists pull it off. It's just um, something that I was wrestling with. Sometimes I pulled it off, sometimes I didn't. So now I just kind of cheat and use that. But I will say, if you're going to do that, you want to make sure whatever paint you have that you're fixing to go over with that marker is dried and set up good. See, so yeah, I just painted them red. 
and then uh, dotted in black. And the inspiration for that actually came from looking at. Um, don't hold me to this, but I think the in the Monster Manual, the current one, the 5E one, the eyes are red with just black pupils. Well, I'm going to shut the camera off. We're going to let that dry before the next step. Well, after I touch it up a little bit, maybe. If you like the work you saw in this video and some of the images you're seeing now, I'm available for commissions. You can reach me through messaging me at Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Barking Dog Studio. Patreon supporters get discounts on commissions as well as credit at the end of the video. Special thanks to the Clarks for their continued support. Bark on, puppies.